I'm Dr. Robin Williams, Chair of Architectural History at the Savannah College of Art and Design. What can a building tell us about a place, about its people, its institutions, and its past? Just as everyone has a family tree of ancestors that is invisible to others, and may even be unknown to the people themselves, a building is very similar in having a hidden history of previous functions and changed features. Even more hidden is the history of the site and any previous buildings that had once existed there. And there are the cultural ancestors from the past of architectural traditions that helped shape its creation. Petter Hall, SCAD's first building, illustrates the rich and complex historical narratives that lie hidden within any building's walls. Today, Petter Hall houses SCAD's story, an immersive 4D experience that tells the story of SCAD's history. But that is just its current story. As SCAD's first building, it was originally called Preston Hall, and before SCAD, it was the Savannah Volunteer Guards Armory. While every building has multiple stories to tell, in Savannah, they are enriched by the role they play within the urban plan. The unique built environment of Savannah is like a symphony without a soloist, where the streets, squares, trees and buildings work together in harmony without any building dominating the orchestration. Instead of a traditional campus of buildings clustered around an open green space, SCAD's unique campus of formerly abandoned and disused buildings at multiple locations across the city reveals the influence of this orchestration. The college followed the city's historic urban patterns of distributed institutions. In effect, SCAD learned from Savannah. Join me as we explore the history of this remarkable building and the part it plays in the city's and SCAD's urban symphony. Petter Hall illustrates the benefits of being a building in downtown Savannah an area defined by a unique urban plan that dates back to the city's founding in 1733 by James Oglethorpe. Usually called the Oglethorpe Plan, but more properly called the Savannah Plan, this unique urban plan involves a series of small urban neighborhoods called wards, each centered on a square and comprising small urban blocks and a complex grid of interlocking streets of varying widths. The plan ultimately grew to 24 wards with squares, and yet it is those aligned with Bull Street, the five on Bull Street, that became the most prominent and most desired. So to have a building facing Bull Street was the best address. To be on Bull Street and face a square like Madison Square right here is even better Petter Hall does both. The area that became Jasper Ward, indicated by the red square, and where Petter Hall now stands, was originally part of the city common beyond the edge of the town laid out by Oglethorpe. During the American Revolution, British fortifications ran through this area. This part of the common saw a variety of uses take place before the distinctive urban plan expanded here in the 1830s. Running down the center of the common was White Bluff Road, the extension of Bull Street south of the town. A large tobacco inspection building stood where the current DeSoto Hotel stands, while a rope walk, a long open structure for making ropes for shipping, crossed the future site of Petter Hall. Shortly after the area was surveyed, one of the first buildings erected in the newly laid out ward was the Female Orphan Asylum on the site of Petter Hall. Straddling two building lots and standing two stories tall above a partially raised basement, the building was rare in Savannah in having monumental pilasters, or flattened columns, rising the full height of the facade. As was usually the case with monumental houses in Savannah, it faced the square fronting Charlton Street rather than facing Bull Street. It must have made a grand impression, especially as it stood on the southern edge of the growing city. Unfortunately, no photographs survive of the building, apart from appearing in the background of a few photos, such as this one, of the Jasper Monument, 
which was completed in 1888. Though obscured by trees, we can get a sense of the asylum's imposing scale. The building would stand until 1890, when it was demolished to make way for the armory of the Savannah Volunteer Guards, one of 11 militia companies then existing in Savannah. The guards' previous armory stood on the back half of a trust lot by Wright Square, where they took over a federal arsenal, replacing it with a grandiose Italianate style building erected in 1886, only to see it destroyed three years later by the 1889 Great Savannah Fire. The Savannah Volunteer Guards hired Boston architect William Gibbons Preston to design their new building. Preston had already designed some of the most prominent buildings in the city, including the Cotton Exchange, the Chatham County Courthouse, and the enormous Hotel de Soto. An initial design for the Guards Armory, much simpler and more massive than the eventual building, appeared in the Savannah Morning News in January 1892, but the article did not identify its architect. It was likely by Preston, though, whose Chatham County Courthouse used the same composition of a stocky corner tower and large central entrance arch. A year later, a different design appeared in a professional architectural journal and employed large round arches and red and beige stonework typical of the Richardson Romanesque style popular since the 1870s. A combination Preston used a couple of years earlier for the Hotel de Soto located across Madison Square. In its final form, Preston used only red brick, but achieved visual interest through the variety of details, textures, and materials on the facade of the building. And to convey the appropriate military character of a militia company building, Preston endowed the design with several castle-like features, from the massive corner towers to the cylindrical turrets that flank the front door and rise the full height of the facade, and along the roof line, crenellations, that feature that you'd find on fortresses where archers would hide and shoot arrows during the Middle Ages. One of the great things about Preston's design for the Guards Armory, or Petter Hall, is the attention to detail that he gave, which was very typical of an architect of the 19th century, and really rewards someone who looks today. For example, behind me, you can see this brick molding that extends out and forms a kind of staggered staircase that informs us exactly what's going on behind these stepped windows. This is, in fact, the st one of the staircases for the building. And above the arches, if we look up, we can see the, the voussoir, the form of the kind of keystone-like elements of the arches are formed by wedge-like bricks. Other brick details included panels of diagonal basket weave pattern on the rear wing housing the drill hall and protruding bricks on the turrets flanking the entrance to form a spiraling effect. Even more extravagant are the ironwork details, the exuberant bracket holding the flagpole and the intricate balcony railings above. The pair of 24 pounder cannons that flank the entrance to Petter Hall, which were discovered under the previous Volunteer Guards Armory when it was demolished in 1889, are believed to be the oldest surviving cannons forged by the US government anywhere in the country. In its original function as the Savannah Volunteer Guards Armory, the members of the militia company would have entered this spacious hall and gone up this grandiose wooden staircase to the second floor where all the principal functions took place. The reception rooms at the front overlooking Bull Street and the drill hall at the back where martial exercises and practicing would have taken place. So let's go upstairs and explore these main interior spaces. As one reaches the top of the stairs, we approach a landing that leads us to the nicest or most grandiose spaces of the interior of this building, the reception rooms overlooking Bull Street. So follow me. The larger the two reception rooms on the second floor displays a lot of its original ornament, particularly the elaborate plasterwork 
along the top of the walls as an ornamental frieze, and this wooden framework that divides the space into two sections, displaying the late 19th century love of ornament with its Doric columns, elaborate frieze, and cornice work. The restored fireplace includes an elegant wooden overmantel with a recreation of a monogram representing the Savannah Volunteer Guards. From the main reception room, we gain access to one of the two balconies where massive round Romanesque arches frame views of Bull Street. And from this balcony, we get the additional benefit of a diagonal view towards Madison Square. We have to imagine members of the militia company coming out here onto the balcony in order to view military parades going by on Bull, or an opportunity to just engage with the city at large down below. Next door is a smaller reception room called the Tomachichi Room, which honors the memory of the local Native American chief of the Yamacra Indians, Tomachichi, who assisted Oglethorpe in the founding of Georgia in 1733 and was a friend of the colony who helped facilitate treaties and the initial success of the Georgia colony. By the late 19th century, his memory was being rediscovered, which aligned with the growing fascination nationwide with the country's Native American heritage. Around the room, a frieze of Native American motifs, tomahawks, pipes, bows and arrows, spears and masks of Native American faces with feathers runs around the perimeter of the room, while over the fireplace, the overmantel has a more specific image of a bow and arrow, a pair of spears, and at the center, a profile view of a Native American chief, presumably Tomachichi himself, except his headdress is not typical or appropriate for a Creek Indian, but rather more typical of one for the Native American tribes of the American West. At the top of the stairs towards the rear is the largest space within the building. So follow me as we enter the drill hall. Filling the rear two-thirds of the building site is the generous openness of the drill hall, whose column-free interior was made possible by the substantial wood and metal truss system and tie rods above our heads and that support the massive gabled roof. The space is also illuminated by windows on the north and south sides that provide ample light and would have made this very useful for the military exercises of drilling and marshalling and honing their military skills uh, as a militia company. But the Savannah Volunteer Guards also use this space for social merriment, for banquets and dances that often went well past midnight. Above the massive Romanesque arch that frames the entrance to the drill hall, we can see a balcony that probably originally accommodated musicians who would serenade the militia company. And that was for dances, which were enormously popular in the 19th century. So we have to remember that a militia company was more than a military organization. It was an important part of the social fabric of Savannah. As documented in the 1898 Sanborn Fire Insurance Map, the Guards Armory belonged to a cluster of socially oriented buildings along Bull Street. To its south was the Harmony Club, a Jewish men's club, and across the street, almost as if in response, its Christian counterpart, the YMCA. The map also shows that the Armory had an open-air rifle range along the north side of the building by Charlton Street, with only a small wooden structure at the east end of the site to stop the bullets. It must have been horrifically noisy for the residential neighbors. This might explain the appearance of a wooden shed enclosing the rifle range a few years later, as documented in a publication of 1902. By 1916, the YMCA had moved to the truss lot north of the Guards Armory, while the Scottish Rite Building made of fireproof materials as indicated by the orange color on the Sanborn map, is now across the street, its footprint mirroring the front of the armory with its full lot width and rounded corners. The map also shows a brick structure where the rifle range had been and now functioning as a swimming pool. Across the back of the building is a bowling alley. 
Bowling remained in active use at the Armory Building until at least the 1940s, when the pastime bowling alleys served students from Armstrong Junior College, a college use of the Armory over 30 years before SCAD acquired the building. In March 1979, SCAD acquired the Volunteer Guards Armory as its first building, which it renamed Preston Hall after its architect and began the process of renovating and adaptively reusing the building to the needs of the art college. SCAD opened for classes in September 1979 with all of the college's functions housed inside along with about a dozen faculty and 75 students. So central was the building to the college's identity that its facade long served as the SCAD logo. The building even adorned college keys, and at least one Christmas ornament. In 1997, the building was rededicated as Petter Hall after the college's co-founders, May and Paul Petter. Today, SCAD uses Petter Hall as the site of SCAD story, an immersive 40 experience that tells the story of SCAD and its history. So students who are considering coming to the college or even anyone really who wants to learn more about SCAD can come to Petter Hall and experience this interactive set of displays that runs through part of the building. And in fact, the interior has been changed over the years as the building has served a variety of different functions from originally housing all parts of the college to gradually as those functions moved on to other buildings, the interior became increasingly specialized, housing only a few departments such as admissions and communications, for a while, graphic design was at the back of the building. And so this building has adapted to the changing needs of SCAD, illustrating the flexibility with which the college uses its historic inventory of buildings. The drill hall, which today is used by SCAD as an event space for different receptions and exhibitions. But this space has been used for many different things by SCAD. Originally, it housed the whole college library in this one room before it was moved out to the Gen Library on Broughton Street as the collection grew. It has been used for multiple admissions events and other things, uh, meetings and so on. And it's typical of how SCAD makes multiple uses of the very many different spaces it has on campus. Beginning with Petter Hall, SCAD quickly acquired other abandoned, disused, or otherwise neglected buildings across the downtown area and eventually spreading to other parts of the city. In contrast to a traditional campus with buildings clustered around an open green space, SCAD instead followed the guidance of the Savannah Urban Plan and its distributive effect due to the numerous roughly equal wards and squares. The range of repurposed and restored buildings that constitute SCAD's campus is breathtaking in its architectural diversity, including a former wholesale store, office building, a department store, a jail, a county health building, and an elementary school. Today, over 70 historic buildings have been given new life. Whether revival, high style, vernacular, or modernist, SCAD embraces all styles and forms of buildings nimbly changing their use as the college's needs continue to evolve. As we've seen, Petter Hall illustrates the many layers of history that exist in every building. Buildings rarely serve the same function throughout their existence, and Petter Hall is no exception. Built for a venerable militia company and housing guns, dances, and even bowling, the building has served SCAD in multiple capacities and is the cornerstone of SCAD's remarkable growth throughout Savannah and to locations abroad. Petter Hall also illustrates the harmonious choreography of buildings within the Savannah plan, benefiting from its prestigious location here on Bull Street and overlooking Madison Square. <laughs>